Hello everyone and welcome to Archie Viking. So today is one of two videos I'm doing on the history of African Americans and their struggle against uh, enslavement in the Americas. I'm doing this because today is Juneteenth, which is the holiday that commemorates the emancipation of African Americans uh, from slavery in the US. Um, however, uh, because of the importance of this day, I feel that rather than only focusing on the history within the Americas, uh, within the US, sorry, um, that we should also uh, talk about and remember uh, other events in their history of the history of enslavement of Africans in the Americas, uh, such as two very specific and uh, successful uh, slave rebellions in the early history of the Americas. So the first one today is the 1733 insurrection on St. John, which is uh, one of the most successful uh, slave rebellions in the history of the Americas, and maybe the second or third most successful, uh, depending on how you look at it. So where is St. John? Well, St. John is one of the Virgin Islands, um, uh, which is a set of islands in the Caribbean, uh, that uh, are divided up between the United States and the UK. Currently, it is St. John is one of the Virgin Islands under uh, the hegemony of the US as one of their territories. However, back in the early 1700s, the 1720s through the 1730s uh, and 40s and such, uh, St. John uh, was part of the West Indies and was a colony of the empire of Denmark or the Danish uh, or the kingdom of Denmark. <clears throat> um, and the kingdom of Denmark was uh, a medium sized empire having territory uh, in Iceland and Greenland and various islands in the North Sea, such as the Orkneys and Fjords. Um, and then also it held uh, control over the southernmost part of Sweden and all of Norway. Uh, so after colonizing St. John, uh, they began to uh, cultivate a economy based off of the enslavement of Africans, um, which is unsurprising. And this was part of what was known as the triangular trade, where slaves would be taken from the Ivory and Gold Coast and sailed over to the Americas, where they would be put into very horrid, horrible conditions and forced to work horrible hours um, to harvest things like sugar um, and cacao and other things to ship to the British colonies and other colonies in the Americas, uh, and then would get things like, from the Americas like rum and other goods to ship back to Africa and repeat process. <clears throat> and the slaves in question uh, actually came from the a region called the Aquamu Empire, or the Kingdom of Aquamu, uh, which was uh, a kingdom founded by Akan speaking peoples um, native to uh, Ghana and Togo and things like that, and countries like that. Uh, and in 1702, these Akan speakers expanded from their homeland here, where it says Aquamu, and uh, imposed their hegemony um, and their authority on other uh, smaller kingdoms, creating a major player on the west coast of Africa. Uh, that actually rivaled another major player in the region, uh, the Kingdom of, of uh, Shanti. However, by the 1720s, a civil war had struck the Kingdom of Kwamu um, that resulted in the original leadership of the Kwamu Empire, the original nobles, as well as generals and many high-ranking soldiers, to uh, be sold off by the uh, side that won the civil war to the Danish slave trade where they were then taken to uh, the uh, island of St. John and put into this slave labor. Um, and so many of these people from this region, not just the nobles, though they were major players, as we'll talk about in a minute, were taken to uh, St. John over the course of these decades. So much so that by uh, 1732 and 1733, uh, the population of enslaved Africans um, numbered about uh, 1,269 people compared to the uh, 153 
free white population that existed in 1732 and early 1733. So there was a massive population difference between the enslaved Africans and their owners. And this obviously combined with the harsh working conditions um, and the harsh treatment, as well as the fact that often you could die of, if you were enslaved, you could die of things uh, such as malaria and yellow fever and such far easier than the wealthy landowners could, um, it, brought, it brought a lot of discontent. Um, to be fair, discontent that was already there due to being enslaved. Uh, so you can imagine how the rebellion sort of began. <clears throat> so while it should be noted that many of the leaders of the, of the uh, 1733 insurrection were nobility and warriors of uh, the Kwamlu Empire, uh, one of the leaders was not. She was a woman named Brefu, uh, and I apologize to anyone from Ghana who, <laughs> for if I mispronounce that, <clears throat> but Brefu, as I just said, was a woman who was uh, captured uh, from Ghana and enslaved in St. John, and so she eventually joined these warriors and nobles uh, from Kwamlu and began to plan uh, this insurrection, and then in 1733, um, they started, and uh, before I get to that, I should note she is one of the first confirmed um, female leaders of uh, any rebellion in the Americas, uh, especially a slave rebellion, uh, a rebellion of enslaved Africans, so she's a very important for, uh, person who should not be forgotten. <clears throat> So in 1733, these leaders, the uh, warriors and nobles of Aquamu, as well as Brefu, gathered up between, uh, the estimate was between 100 to 150, maybe 200 um, enslaved Africans together and began a slave insurrection. Uh, and one of the first things they did uh, was one, they uh, captured uh, Coral Bay uh, on St. John and made it their base. And then, uh, because many of them had experience as warriors and soldiers in the Kwamu Empire, um, they infiltrated the several Danish garrisons on the island and slaughtered the garrison, slaughtered uh, the militia and such. Um, and some of the weapons they used during that time were things like this, uh, which was is a blade used to harvest sugarcane. So it's very sharp, and obviously, considering they knew how to used it day in and you know day out uh, for you know hours on end, they knew how to use it very well. And you can imagine if it can, can cut through sugarcane, it can probably cut through a human body fairly well. And of course, they were able to after storming the garrison, steal some guns as well. Uh, so eventually, uh, Brifu and the leaders in the slave insurrection were able to either uh, make uh, many of the slave owners and uh, wealthy landowners abandon their plantations, which is what the green areas are, is our abandoned plantations, or they were able to gather uh, more allies from plantations uh, and destroy plantations, which is what the red are, is destroy plantations. Now, we, we don't know how many were left occupied after this, uh, hence the yellow, which are unknown. But we do know at least one plantation, which was on the far end of the island, away from their base, which is uh, this red dot here, the base of the enslaved um, Africans led by the Aquamu leadership in Brefu. Um, so they were relatively safe uh, from the area. But that being said, the success of Brefu and the other leaders' uh, slave insurrection um, caused a great many, uh, in fact, most of the wealthy landowners to flee. Uh, and furthermore, it emboldened many of the enslaved Africans to A, either come and join the rebellion, forming uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, total, uh, not counting the main base here in Coral Bay, uh, rebel camps, but also in inspired a great many uh, enslaved Africans to run away to these four blue areas right here to create what are called maroon camps or camps uh, of runaway enslaved Africans who have created a you know new society a new town uh, in an attempt to gain freedom 
away from their masters. <clears throat> right, oh, sorry, let me rephrase that, away from their enslavers. <clears throat> uh, and, you know, uh, in fact, uh, they were able to gather quite a lot. Uh, now, again, we don't know the exact numbers. The numbers estimate between 150-ish to 300 uh, members of this uh, rebellion. But uh, we do know that they were able to gain quite a lot of um, members. Uh, as you can see here, uh, just this is just two of the lists of enslaved Africans who joined the rebellion. And you can see it was, it was quite a high population. For example, over here, this, these lists of several uh, plantations uh, consisted of a total number of enslaved Africans being about 298 to 300. Uh, and over 70 of those joined the rebellion. That's a significant percent. And the same can be over here uh, with the, the several plantations, including about 64, and 16 of them ran away and joined. So again, a, a significant percent. Not all of them, some of them did stay um, and remain quote unquote loyal out of fear. But um, many of the enslaved Africans uh, saw this as the perfect time to try and gain their freedom. And they were very successful. So with this influx of reinforcements, as well as uh, the uh, strong leadership under Brefu and the uh, nobles and generals and such from the Kwame Empire, for over a year, the, this uh, slave, enslaved rebellion um, succeeded very well and instilled fear on the few remaining landowners who were there and then drove out most of the other landowners. However, uh, this all began to change in late, uh, in 1734, when the governor of uh, St. John uh, sent for help uh, at the French colony of Martinique, and the French colony answered. Uh, and their answer was to send uh, between 500 and 600 professional soldiers consisting of several hundred Swiss mercenaries and several hundred professional uh, French uh, officers. And so these new fresh professional soldiers landed on St. John in 1734 and in a series of quick ambushes and campaigns over the course of that year were able to drive, uh, hunt down, and uh, defeat uh, all of the uh, rebel camps, um, forcing most of them back into enslavement. Uh, with many of the Kwame leaders, including Brefu herself, uh, killing themselves rather than being captured and enslaved again. Uh, so finally putting an end to the uh, 1733 insurrection on St. John and continuing slavery on St. John for another hundred years. However, uh, there is some sort of silver lining because a hundred years later uh, in 18... 33, um, or sorry, in the 1840s, uh, uh, on the Danish island of St. Croix, um, eventually uh, emancipation would happen for enslaved Africans. And this would happen because uh, under the rule of Governor Peter von Schulten, um, many enslaved Africans uh, in the eight, uh, late 1830s, early 1840s began uh, peaceful but intense uh, protests over their enslavement, uh, eventually forcing Peter von Schulten to grant them their freedom and emancipation. So the, finally, after a hundred years under Danish rule, enslaved Africans were granted their freedom. And it should be noted that this was about 30 years before the, Ameri before the U.S. Uh, emancipated uh, our slaves. So while unfortunately, uh, as successful as it was, the 1733 insurrection of St. John was eventually put down, um, it did instill an immense fear in the minds of Denmark, so much so that 100 years later, when an event of similar size happened, albeit peaceful, it caused the governor of uh, the neighboring island of St. Croix to grant the enslaved Africans their freedom. So with that, that ends our video. Uh, did you learn about this history? Uh, I think it's a very important thing to learn about because we often forget that in many cases, many countries were uh, uh, seeing um, 
one, the several insurrections that the U.S. and Confederacy feared were actually happening. Um, two, it also meant that the emancipation of enslaved Africans was actually happening earlier in many of these places, including the Danish Empire. Um, it's also important to remember important figures uh, such as Brefu, who is um, one important for women's history, but also very important for the history of African Americans. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and if you have any other subjects you want me to cover, uh, feel free to comment, leave a comment in the comment section. Uh, remember to like, share, and subscribe, and stay tuned for part two of the series, uh, which is the video on the Haitian Revolution, the most successful uh, slave rebellion, uh, sorry, rebellion by enslaved Africans in the history of the Americas. And with that, I hope you have a good day, uh, and remember to like, share, and subscribe.